game of the week. Ohio State minus three and a half at Penn State. Boy, oh boy, this is a doozy because the amount of pressure on both of these coaches and on both of these fan bases is absolutely immense because they know how much this game matters, how important it is, and the fact that the records in this game exactly haven't been that great in terms of top five games for their head coaches. Now, you've seen all the stats. They are absolutely true. And if you haven't, let me refresh your memory a little bit. So Ohio State coach Ryan Day, he has not beaten a top five opponent since September 3rd, 2022. Now, for some teams, depending on who you are, you may not have played a top five team, but he has. He has lost four straight, and Ryan Day is two and six versus top five teams. And then when you add in the first Oregon game that was in uh, the, the shoe as well, it ain't a good record right now. Now, on the other hand, James Franklin, Penn State's head coach, he hasn't beaten a top five opponent since October 22nd, 2006. He's lost 10 straight because you know he's had an opportunity to play more because he's played Michigan and he's played Ohio State a bunch of times. Now, James Franklin is one and nine versus Ohio State. And James Franklin is three and 17, not only versus top uh, five teams, but versus top 10 teams. And why am I using the head coach's names instead of the school names? That's because the way that their own frustrated fan bases have been talking. They're like, Ryan Day ain't beat nobody. James Franklin ain't beat nobody. Uh, not we haven't beat anybody, but it's they are looking at it like this is solely the coach's fault. And after last week when Ohio State barely escaped Nebraska, we've had a whole week of doom and gloom out in Columbus. People calling for Ryan Day's job. They don't like the defensive line rotations. They don't like anything that this dude is bringing. And so they are nervous. That is a nervous habit. Now, how many times have we seen people, right? When they get a little nervous about something, they start lashing out at other people. Oh, you did this, you did mm -mm -mm, Because internally, they feeling it. They're feeling that pressure. And that's exactly what's happening to Ohio State fans right now. And then you got Penn State fans. They're already pre-mourning a loss right now. That hasn't even happened because their starting quarterback, Drew Aller, he may not even play because he has a leg injury. Now, I'm not sure why they'd even think that he would have been one to make a big difference anyway, because he hasn't. He's been a cool quarterback, but he hasn't been exceptional to the fact that like, you're like, damn, we're, 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 we're missing our Cam Ward right here. We're missing our uh, Dylan Gabriel. We're missing somebody who's going to make certain amount of plays that we don't feel like that anybody else in the country can make. And the bottom line is, these are two very good teams that deserve to be ranked in the top five. But because they haven't gotten over the hump, they are going to be miserable until they do. This game this weekend is in Happy Valley. But Ohio State, they're not afraid of that environment because Ryan Day has to be looking at how USC had five explosive plays for almost 200 yards against this Penn State team, who is a very good defense. And then Ryan Day has to be thinking to himself, hmm, that Chip Kelly, offensive genius mastermind, has to be able to orchestrate something to get that same level of production. And when you think about this Ohio State team and these running backs, Quinshawn Judkins, uh, Trayvon Henderson, bro, this is legacy game time. It is time to do it. And uh, Mecca Ekbuka, uh, Jeremiah Smith, yeah, this is their time to shine. But the question is, is Bo Prabula, Penn State's backup quarterback, if he has to play, is he a difference maker? Or is this a an offense that is not capable of doing that? Now, I am also... Looking at their, their tight end, Ty Waller, the kid is a baller. Love to watch him play. And he absolutely scorched USC for 224 yards, I think on 17 catches. It was an unreal performance. Now the question is, can Ohio State stop him? And can Prabula, if he has to play, can he be special? Because that's been the difference between Penn State winning these games and losing these games is having a quarterback who cannot just be efficient and not turn the ball over once every 92 passes like Drew Aller is doing. No, it is somebody who can take the next step and be special. So the question is, will it be Will Howard 
and the Buckeyes uh, offensive weapons that are able to be the most special? Or will it be Drew Aller and his running game and their, their tight end? Who's going to be the difference maker in this game? And I'm telling you with this three and a half point spread, sorry, Penn State fans, I got to take the Buckeyes because yes, they looked bad last week, but there's no way they lose this game too, right? Right.